Well, our vacation's done, and we're back at the back at the wizard shop, and there's plenty of work waiting on us. If you haven't already, you've seen the the first airing of Car Issues with Tyler Hoover on FYI Channel. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure enjoyed it. It's an excellent show, and there's many more episodes to come. So, on to the shop. Things going on in the shop. We just got this in the mail. You guys heard about us hitting the 100,000 subscriber milestone. Let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. Fancy letter. Ooh. I can see myself in it. You can see yourself in it. Amazing. Let's put this on the wall. There we go. There it is on the wall for everyone to see. So let's head out to the shop. There's some interesting things going on out there. I've got a really cool car you guys could look at. Let's head that way. Well, here we are. We're back in the wizard shop. Nice warm weather and it's finally stopped raining all over the place. I just got a text from one of my valued customers who says his check engine light is on. No, it's not the Imperial. It is a 1998 Ferrari 550 Marinello. So the only complaint he has is the check engine light came on. And on these types of cars, you don't just say ignore that and just keep driving. So we're going to take a look at it and see what's, what's going on with it. And I'm going to show you that you don't have to have a $10,000 scan tool to just see what's going on with the car. I'm also going to show you a really cool tool that I just got from Autel. You're really going to like it. It does a lot of has a lot of features. It does a lot of cool things. So let's go ahead and hook it up and uh, see what the codes are. I got this from Autel not too long ago. It's the AL539. So I've been waiting for a good, good opportunity to use this thing and show you all that it can do. It's not just a scan tool or a little code reader. It does a whole lot of cool things. And we're going to go through those and show them to you. First thing we're going to do is check for codes. So here we have engine and engine. The reason for that is that there's two control modules, engine control modules on this vehicle. One for the right bank, one for the left bank of the engine. Pretty common on 90, early 90s Ferraris to have this. So let's check uh, the first one. Multiple misfire. Eight, 11, nine, 10, 8, 9, 10, 11 are misfiring. Let's track the other engine computer. No codes in that computer. So if you didn't hear it too well because the engine was running, what we did was just check the two engine control modules since there's two on this vehicle, not just one. One for the left bank, one for the right bank. And we found the driver's side is showing misfires in 8, 9, 10, and 11. So that's only on the driver's side. The passenger side is fine. So let's check that out. So here's the beautiful engine on this thing. And I have already smoke tested it with a smoke machine. I didn't find any vacuum leaks. Didn't find any issues going on that way. What's a common issue on these is they get stored on these Ferraris and Lamborghinis is they store for a long time. The battery goes dead or the battery tender or some issues with that or and as you can see on the battery terminals here lots of marring that tells me it's have to been jump started or charged or whatnot and I look at the date code on the battery 5 of 14 getting to be five, six years old already, five. That's about the lifespan of a battery. So you think, this is a little scan tool, a little code reader, and that's the end of it. No, it's also a multimeter. Let's go ahead and hook that up and show you that. It has two test leads. So let's get out of the code reading portion of this thing. 
and we go down to multimeter. It's got auto, DC, AC, continuity, diode check, amperage checks, 20 amp and 200 milliamp. So let's go see what the battery reads. Twelve point five volts. So that's good. And some of you may say, well that doesn't tell you if the battery's good. You just can't just measure the volts and know it's a good or bad battery. You're absolutely right. This thing also tests batteries. Let's hook that up. Where we had our OBD2 cable hooked up, we're going to hook in these alligator clamp cables. Hook that up. And now we'll go to battery test. This is not a regular battery. This is an AGM. It says MT7 AGM. So let's select AGM. Cold cranking amps on this one. 800. Replace battery. It was able to pull 318 cold cranking amps out of it. So we have the check engine light on. He, the customer has mentioned to me that this happened after it had a battery drain or some issues with the battery. He got it running. It's been running fine. So what I'm thinking is that there's an issue with this battery. We're going to replace the battery and then do some further checks. Um, I just wanted you guys to see this cool car. We're not really focusing on this car on this episode. I really wanted to show you this handy dandy tool. It's more than just a code reader. It can do so much more. It's a really cool tool. So that one tool, it could do it test your batteries. It could test voltages. It could test codes, check for codes. It can do a lot of things all in one unit. So we still have some checking to do on this car and we'll be get, digging a little deeper and see, verifying is it just a battery or is there something other issue, ignition coils or something else going on. But I really just wanted to show you guys that really cool tool that I've had for a little while. It's really awesome, really useful. We'll have this on an Amazon affiliate page if you want to go check it out. Let's go take a look around the shop and see what's going on in the shop. Since I've been back, I've got plenty more to do, including this one. As you saw a second ago, we have the Flying Imperial here. And you've seen on Hoovy's recent video that we have the oil pan and everything, but we really didn't go in depth of why or what's going on. So what's going on with this is this engine has been rebuilt. So these little two-piece rubber seals, I mean, they, they may work. It's kind of a crapshoot. The deal is, is when they made these guides, when they cut these grooves, it's not concentric. It's not perfectly round. I proved that when I had it up in the car, when I had the top seal still in there. One side was squished flat, the other side was still sticking out pretty far. That told me there's no concentric seal there. And you're not going to get a concentric seal with these rubber. On these older cars, I mean, it, sometimes it might work, but usually it doesn't. The, the fix for this is the old hot rod, the old hot rod, you know, I had the rope seals. That's what we're going to put back in here. It's just a genuine old plain old rope seal and it will stop the leak. It's guaranteed to because really that's what should be in here. It can take up the slack. It can be a little bit shifted to one side or to the other and still seal the crankshaft. So that's what's going on with, with why he had a rear main seal leak. So on to the next car. This is another really cool car I have in the shop. It's a 95 Corvette with the LT1 in it. Unfortunately, just like so many of these LT1s, the water pump drive seal is leaking oil like Niagara Falls down the front of the engine all over the OptiSpark. And so we're going to pull the water pump, the main pulley distributor off and get that seal replaced. And we're looking into the clutch and some wiper issues, but uh, really not a whole lot wrong with this car. We're just going to get those things taken care of and get them fixed up. So on to the next one. Here I stand between two of the most crazy buying decisions I've ever seen Tyler made. This is, this is goofy. It blew the motor up. 
He pushed a button and sent this thing to its grave. And I even told him when I was done, it's probably gonna blow up the motor. Anyways, this thing needs a transmission. He has one on its way. We're gonna put either the mechatronics or the whole transmission in it and take care of his warning issues on his dash. Otherwise, it's a good running car. We're taking care of a lot of bushings and different things that were wrong with it. We're just waiting on those and we'll get this thing out of here. They're also the same company, J&J Auto, that sent, is sending this transmission is also sending Tyler an engine for this little guy. And I have a, a summer high school kid that's in here helping me and he wants to learn the trade. He gets to learn how to pull a motor on this thing. That's what he's gonna do. So that'll be his little project. So a lot of you have been wanting an update on the, the Fleetwood Slow Ham. And it has been pretty slow going, getting this thing going. This is another project for my high school kid that I hired. This is down his alley, an older car, and he can learn tricks of the trade. As he goes along, he makes these small, minor mistakes, and I correct him and say, this is how you do this, this is how you do that. And he's learning quite a bit. He's doing very well. One of the things, though, that I was really impressed with him is I, I gave him this starter. This is off of the later model 350 diesels. It's a gear reduction starter. I said, put that on. He came back to me and he said, this isn't going to work because this rests on the cross member. So I'm going to have to send this back. I ended up having to put the old original during the first years of the 350. It's just a direct drive starter. It's the motor straight, not offset. And it fits perfectly. It's currently on the car. So he took care of that for me. Another snag we ran into, another snag we ran into is this exhaust manifold on the driver's side has issues. The passenger side is perfect, but as we put this in there, this landed right on the steering linkage. That's not going to work. What I ended up doing is finding a manifold off of a 1964 Oldsmobile Jetstar with a, I think it would have been a Olds 350. It had a center dump right down the center. And I put, as you can look in there and see, it clears beautifully. It clears the steering linkage. It clears the front, the cross member. Everything. It works perfectly. Well, first we'll put the injection pump and all the lines, the intake plenum. That's the next step on this thing. We've got a new radiator in. The old one was bad. This is an aluminum heavy duty radiator. And we're going to have to plumb some new fuel lines and put the fuel tank back in with a, a new fuel sender. The one that was in there was bad. But really, we don't have a whole lot left. We just need to find some time to do it. So that's where we're at on the caddy. We have made some progress. It's not a whole lot, but the starter issue's been figured out. The manifold issue's been figured out. We've got the, the radiator put in it. So we're getting there, guys. We'll get there. This is another Hoovy car that's in here. This is his 911 Turbo. And it is extremely fast. Very fast car. Very fun car. I followed behind it, a few cars behind it on the pig trail in, in Arkansas when we went as a group, the Midwest Drivers Club. There was a Lamborghini Huracan twin turbo, this underground racing. And there was a few other cars that were obviously very fast. He was able to keep right with them, right behind them. Probably, obviously not as fast. He couldn't beat them, but he was right there with them with this little thing. I was really impressed. It really just went through the curves like it was nothing. It needs brakes, rotors, needs an oil change, and he's gonna have some tires shipped and we're gonna put some tires on it. He's gonna track it. So that's what that's waiting on, is some parts. And over here, we, I, I don't even know what's going on over here. That's Crazy D's realm, him, him and his guys. He's got his little lot that he sells this agricultural stuff and he gets this stuff in and he gets it fixed. And that's their own little world right here. The wizard doesn't venture into this world. I don't even know anything about that stuff. Car wizard, are those bike handles on that lawnmower? Again, I don't, I don't know anything about these things. I know that it's called a Heckendorn mower. That's about all I know about it. It really looks goofy. I wouldn't mow with it. Anyways, let's head this way. This is my 84 Corvette that I recently acquired. I've gone through and done a lot of things to it. I did a harmonic balancer. I got the air conditioning fixed. Uh, I did a serpentine belt on it. I put a different radio in it. The old one was shot and all the amplifiers were shot. I've done some services on it and I also rebuilt the cluster myself. It's got nice, bright, pretty gauges again. There they are. Right there on the 
listen to my radio working. It's a very fun car. I can't wait to be traveling and doing, going back and forth to work in it. It's not as fast as the 95 back there, but I still enjoy it. It's fun. And the last car in the shop, probably my favorite car in the shop, is the Lamborghini Murcielago. Let's take a look in the back. I got, finally got the new compressor in. I've got it mounted into its bracket. I've got the bracket mounted. I've got a new belt. Now I need to put the alternator in and get everything tensioned up properly. And then everything else goes back together here. Pretty simple. The rest of it's pretty simple. We've got boxes of hoses and fluids. We're going to do all the fluids and service it. It won't be too much longer and Leo will be screaming up and down the road in his silver demon here. Very fast car. Very awesome car. So that pretty much sums it up in the wizard shop. As I said, when I came back, I had plenty waiting on me, and I do. So, and I'm glad that pays the bills. So next week, we're going to do a video of buy this, not that, on Chevrolet. The different cars that I would stay away from, and the ones that are awesome. Ones that I would re highly recommend. So, again, if you see any tools that, you, that I've used that you're interested in, they're on Amazon Affiliates page especially the little Autel AL539 I just used, that'll be on there. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And we have t-shirts, we have hoodies, we have decals, and there's also coffee mugs. If you're interested in any of that, that's also clicked in the link below. Don't forget to watch Car Issues on FYI. If you haven't already, you're really going to enjoy it. It's going to be an awesome show. I think it really is going to do great. I've got plenty of waiting on me. I better get back to work, and thanks for watching.